Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk about the frilly Echevera. Now the reason why I want to talk about the Echevera is I keep my Echeveras, the frilly ones, at the back of the house. And I've sort of neglected it. I've been trying to concentrate on the front side of the house without actually thinking of these lovely frilly Echevera. Now, two days ago, I go at the back and I suddenly realize my Echevera has started growing but the problem is is because the situation of where I put it they're trying to look for the sun so one of them is actually bent and I realized the stem is going to break so I want to share with you today on how to do a frilly echevera and propagate it and in that way we can multiply our stock and also show you how the stem is uh, how the stem does eventually do get pop and you'll end up with so many Echeveras. So my name is Alice and welcome back to my channel. Let's go on with it. So we were talking about Echeveras. Now we had done this um, an episode on the cacti and we had actually looked at the Echevera and we had showed you how to propagate from the leaf stem. Now this is one of the ones that I had actually propagated at this time and you see the beautiful thing about Echevera is this rosetta, look at that, and then the colour of the Echevera, this is a bluish colour but it's lovely and then when you do get its babies is like what I have here is that we know that the babies either come from the stem or through propagation of the leaves but look at this, I've got all these rosettas here and it makes it just more interesting so that's why I've left it as it is. Now the thing about um, the Echevera is at this point in our climate, uh, which is actually during the rainy season is starting to pick up again, is that it starts to flower. And what happens is that you get this uh, spike of flower coming out and if you get the bigger Echeveras they could actually be quite tall and different Echeveras have different colored flowers and I just noticed I'm getting my flowers here from my babies. The thing about Echeveras is these cacti, amazing, they're so beautiful, is you could either grow them in a pot or you could even have it as ground cover, especially in rock gardens, and they look stunning. Now, let's go back because I am talking about my frilly Echevera. Now, where I had actually had it located was at the back. And as I mentioned to you, is that the sun, I thought it was okay, but what was happening is that in the end is that they were some of them, like this one in particular, was looking for the sun. So what happens is, if I move this aside and bring it forward, is as it's looking for the sun, it started to bend. And this is what you sometimes get with these giant Echeveras. As they don't get enough sunlight, they start leaning themselves towards the sun. And what happens is, the flower, the plant itself gets heavy and the stem here cannot cope with the weight and it will crack. So what I want us to do is rescue it. Now the way I am going to rescue is actually repot it, but it's a whole load of process to actually repot this Echevera. Basically cacti is the type of soil, all you need is a really good well-drained soil. So you can either go for a cacti potting mix or else when you're making your potting soil add a bit of grit inside, uh, river sand and mix it with the soil because the problem with cacti is they don't like to be waterlogged and if you do get waterlogged you will get root rot. The other thing is that what I would like to introduce in my cacti when I do repot this eventually is also introduce pumice which can also uh, help with the drainage just like river sand or perlite so that the water really does drain through. If you're living in Europe 
or in America is any of the sort of uh, division you would like to do, try to do it in spring and summer because cacti do go into dormancy in the winter and so it is not a right time to do it. As soon as the spring comes or in the middle of summer, do your propagation or do your division of, of propagation through the stem. As we know, most Echeveria's cacti like full sun. Sometimes you could place it in bright, partial sun, but in shade you get this sort of thing happening. They start looking for the sun and in the end you will lose your cacti, it'll crack. Now the thing about cacti is watering. Cacti don't require so much water because they do store water in their leaves. Now if you look at this, I had it outside and it did rain last night. These leaves are very pumped up. And also with this particular one, because I am going to do um, a propagation with it, and one of my requirements is before I'm going to chop it up and behead it, is I'm going to give it enough water to make it survive through this drastic action, because I will show you how the propagation is, uh, and it will require to use its own leaves to sustain itself to root. Now, the thing is, is that you always notice if a cat is hasn't had water for a long time what happens is the leaves start wrinkling now what is is about that is that once it doesn't get water for a long time if you forget to water it and you see a wrinkled leaf it means that what it is doing is actually all the water that is stored in the leaves is sort of sucked into the plant to sustain itself so that is a really good indication that you need to water your plant when you do have wrinkled crinkly leaves during the summer, your Echeveria is going to grow. And the way you know that your Echeveria is growing is usually, if you look at the crown as a point here, is you see it is a bit light green. That means the crown is actually producing, it's growing. And that's how you know that the plant is going through a growth period. Now, as you get into fall and into winter, is what happens is when it, the temperature does drop, it goes into dormancy. And this is the time where you don't water your plant a lot. So I would say during dormancy, you know, do your finger test and maybe every 10 days or even 14 days, but don't keep it moist because you will get root rot. Now what happens is, is when you do have Echeveris, these big ones, you will notice that sometimes as you look underneath, you get the drying out of the leaves. That is normal, I wouldn't panic about it, but it is quite normal. I would just take it and throw it for as long as the main plant is growing. Now, what has happened here as it's growing, I've got this lovely flower coming out. And this flower, as I said, is a spike. And with these big giant frill, frilly uh, echevera, what happens is that it could even grow as, as tall as maybe two feet tall and then the flower starts coming out and I think with this particular one you do get orange flowers and they do last. Now the last thing I'd like to point out is sometimes what happens is that if you look at your plant your Echeveria, it does turn red and sometimes people panic. Now the reason it turns red basically is if it's receiving too much sun and heat, in order to protect itself, what the cacti does, it produces a red pigment. This is to prevent it from getting scorched or sunburnt. So when you do see that, it's actually quite normal. So let me just move this one, I hope it doesn't fall, and put this aside. And so let's look at how we're going to help my little baby here survive because as it tips it could fall over and break a few of its leaves and I don't want that but at the same time I would like to propagate my Echevera freely and so what it is with this Echevera like all cacti is um, you get the stem and wherever you see the node on the stem is where the leaf has come from 
out of these nodes is also where you're going to get your pups, the babies of this amazing mother plant once we propagate. The other thing about this plant is out of the nodes you also get rooting and these rootings at the moment because they are above surface they look a bit dry but once we do put it in soil they will start rooting. So now let me put back my gloves and we're going to show you how to propagate and for me it's quite painful because we have to chop the head off and once we chop the head we'll be able to actually multiply and also get our pups along the stem. So first thing what you do is you get your sterilized knife because a knife is easier than the scissors, is all I'm going to do is I'm going to chop on the green part because as the cacti gets old, the bottom bit, which is the old bit of the stem, does get a bit woody and we don't want that. And second thing, what we want is to keep as much as the stem if you want to get pups, more pups. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in here and behead it. Okay, done, beheaded, <laughs> poor thing. So I'm gonna just flip it over so we don't get the leaves crunched. And there you are, cacti number one, beheaded. So I'm gonna put this on the side and we're going to do the same thing with these other two. I'm gonna put it here, drag it here. This is a bit more easier than that because it hasn't tilted. So what I'm going to do is do exactly the same with this one. And again, we're going to cut it at the green part because as it gets um, the older part, you may not get enough pups. So I'm just gonna go about one inch, as I said, with this one, one to one and a half inches and take the knife and cut it. And there we go, number two. This last one is a bit more difficult because it started to, to tilt, but I will try it, I'll bring it back. But you have to be careful that you don't lose too much of the stem as it tilts. Here we go, I'm gonna do it now. Again, I'm going to go just below here, again on the green part. So now here are my, my mothers of my babies. Now the thing about cacti, as we know, you have to callus them. And callusing is actually really good because it seals the plant at the stem where you cut it. In that way you don't get microbes and all these sort of infestations going up your plant and actually ruining it, your chances of actually keeping it alive or propagation. And the thing about uh, when you do callus, it may take maybe a week or 10 days but it is really a good preventative method of actually saving or preserving your plant. Now, the thing is, is that with these three cacti, because they're still very raw as I've cut them, is um, what you have to do is in order for replanting it is let it callous slowly, which I'll show you how to do. And then what is amazing about it is at the nodes, as I mentioned before, you should have rooting starting, which will take about a month. We're going to air propagate it. So you'll get your rooting on the nodes. So what we'll do is, let me show you, is take a pot, take your plant, and just place it, just like that. And we're going to leave it like this for a month or so until I see my roots, which will grow, because what will happen is like, keep your plant, first of all, upright, but basically is that everything will drain and go and help the rooting system here. 
because it does want to reproduce itself and live longer. But um, that was what is going to happen. So I have another pot here, hope it fits. And I'm going to take this one. And this is what you get in air propagation. And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not feeding it on any water. I am not going to place it in full sun. I'm going to put it in indirect sun. In fact, I have to find a location for them because if I keep them outside and it's our rainy season, we don't want to get water on the leaves because it will start to rot. So I would keep it in a shaded area, somewhere where it's got a bit of shade so that I don't get rain coming through. But then within a month or so, which we will do a part two and show you the rooting. And this one, exactly the same, turn it upside down. And that is the first step of a propagation for my frilly echevera. And I forgot to say one point because we did mention that it has flowered. But what I will do is actually remove that flower just like that and because we want all the energy to go into making the root structure we don't want to give it into seed production flower production and we lose that energy everything should be here giving the energy to the roots so now what i'm going to do is just remove them so one month and i'm just going to place them on the floor there we go they're going to surprise me there we go. Oh, beautiful mama plant. And we put him down. So we're done with that. So now we're looking at these here. And the thing is, what we want is these stems will produce your pups. So what I want to do is, we'll just do fast forward here, is I'm going to just uproot this and let's look at it. So what I'm doing is actually going to repot them. And I just want you to have a look at the root structure of this um, cacti. So this is the root structure. And as you notice, again, as we mentioned earlier, all the rooting comes from the node. So here you could actually quite clearly see it. And I can see even a bit of rooting growing. So now what we've done is, is we've uprooted. This is my Echeveria cacti. And here it is with the rooting, and we've showed you where the rooting takes place. Now with this one, as we mentioned, everywhere you get the node is that you will get a pup. So I'm going to just put it in the soil. And this soil is just full of pumice, compost, and a bit of gar uh, normal uh, gardening soil. But we have to have it well draining, and I can feel the grit in it, but well draining because we don't want it to get root rot. So what I'm going to do here is make a hole deep enough and put my cacti here and just cover it. And again, I'm going to just leave it out because we also have to get it to callus. But at this point, for as long as it's in the soil, and I wouldn't water it for two, three days. I'd let the soil actually dry out and leave it like that for a little while because the soil is actually a bit moist because the sack it came in was outside last night and it rained. So I wouldn't water this one in particular for maybe until I touch it, do the finger test and make sure that the soil is dry. So we have two cacti. Now, this one, I was a bit sort of, a bit giddy about it because it has bent. Now, what I could do with this one is I'm going to cut it because we don't want our pups to form at the bend. It won't give enough space and we don't know where they're going to produce themselves. So I'm going to try to straighten it out with the knife and then we'll repot it. Just like that. There we go. And so again, I'm going to put it in this pot, 
which is full of grit. It's a cacti mix. So here I am with the final one. We've cut it. Um, I'm thinking about this one, but I'll experiment until we know what to do with it. But then basically here we are. We have the stems here where we hope to get pups at the edges. And then we have the crown, the big cabbage frilly echevera, where we've actually put it in a pot with no soil, no water, we're air propagating the roots and we'll follow this channel again. We'll have a part two. Once I get rooting on my crown, we will do an episode and then I'll take you to the next stage of taking the head and placing it back in the soil. And don't forget, again, cacti do want grit. They, this is full of pumpstone, stone, a bit of compost and all the goodies but it needs a well-drained soil. And always keep the Echevera ca cabbage head, as I call it, upright so that in the end is that all the nutrients can filter down to the roots so you can get rooting. So fellow gardeners, thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this channel. It's been quite challenging chopping heads this today, but I think it's, it's great to see how to deal with the frilly Echevera and also go and buy one and just know that once it does almost tip over you can rescue it and in the process you will get pups and get a propagation thank you so much don't forget to like and to share and also spread the word around and also don't forget to press that notification button and don't forget to, to follow us on Instagram. We do do posting of interesting plants and also what we do is we do give tips and it's just great to interact and don't forget to share your comments and also comment on our channel and I'm always there to answer your questions. Thank you so much and have a lovely, lovely day. Thank you. Bye.